Hello everyone and welcome to World Photography Day. I'm Panilla and today I have invited our OM System Ambassador Henry Carlson. Welcome! Thank you, it's nice to be here. <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, your photography Henrik and uh, you're going to show us some pictures here from the forest. So Henrik, how did you become a photographer? To make a very long story quite short at least. It started off uh, when I started seventh grade in school. Um, back then in, in Sweden we used to have one hour every week that we could choose any subject that we wanted to do. And the, the school I went to had a dark room and there was this this guy at the youth center who had um, who were a photographer and I guess he actually had um, begged and plead for the school to, to buy this um, this darkroom. So he, he was nagging on all of the new kids in school that they're going to choose photography for this this um, subject. So that's that's what I did. So I started off doing black and white. So how did you move over to OM System? For a very long time I, I actually used another brand. But since I'm, I'm traveling quite a lot and um, also I, I like to use um, I like to be very close to my subject, so I, I need lenses where you can get the focus on, on the on the subject. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I spoke to to uh, you guys on, on OM and realized that you have that, that uh, thing on, on on your lenses, I was very interested. And then also when when you actually just lift the camera, it's it's very light and easy. So it's mm -hmm. very handy and when I'm traveling. So yeah. That's the main reasons. Mm, perfect. So, can you tell me what inspire you as a photographer? And maybe we can see a picture. This one is actually one um, one picture is which is taken with the um, seven fourteen millimeter lens, uh, and I'm twelve centimeters from these orchids. Wouldn't be possible to do that with any other system that's on the market today. So this is from my, my home area, uh, Erland, same place as we are now in Sweden, but different reserve, but same, same island, yeah. So beautiful. You, Penilla, you mentioned what, what inspires my photography. Mm -hmm. And my main reason these days for photography is actually to tell stories, to, to tell stories about conservation, about nature and, and the, um, uh, both the beautiful and the not so beautiful things in nature. So, can you tell about, a little bit about your workflow? Uh, do you do a lot of editing? No, I'm not really. I'm not really that guy that is in much to editing because my main priority uh, is to actually be out in the field taking the shots. So I, I want to do as little editing as possible. But of course, I mean, I'm shooting in RAW, so you have to do editing. Mm. That comes without a question. Mm. But I try to keep it simple. I do contrast. I do uh, do saturations uh, on the images. So, for example, this this image here, uh, which is a male stag beetle, right. actually taken in this nature reserve mm. two summers ago, I think. So we hope that we will find those yes. later today. Yes. Mm. So, what I've done here is I'm, I've been shooting against the sun uh, to get this nice um, yellow background, mm. all these circles in the background, which is the setting sun. And then you have the oak tree leaves and, and the stag beetle as as a contour, as a silhouette. So, for example, in this image, I've, I've just done the the contrasts, the black blacks actually, and then saturated the uh, the yellow color. This one is shot with the uh, 300 millimeters mm. lens. Yeah. So yeah, squeezed. Yeah. The compressed the the, um, the depth of field, so to say. That's really nice. Yeah. And I would say both the, the 300 millimeter lens and the 440 or 150 mm. zoom, that's excellent lenses actually to shoot pictures like this um, or flowers or other insects. It's very nice because of the, the close range you can get into the subject. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the, your favorite time of the year? Do you have any favorite season? I would say any season is, is good for photography. Mm. Of course, if I'm in Sweden, like in Jul July, August, it's a little bit of a slower season mm -hmm. because it's it's high summer here. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I enjoy photographing mm -hmm. in spring, summer, winter, fall, anytime. Mm -hmm. 
the time you get to photo uh, do photography is the best time. Okay. Mm. Do you have a favorite time of the day? And I think we have something we can show here. Well, I guess m most of the times when you speak to nature photographers about the best time of the day to shoot uh, is early morning and late evening. Of course, I mean, it's beautiful with the yellow light mm. or the blue colors and whatever. And I try to do this as much as possible. I'm a little bit lazy in the mornings. Sometimes it's hard to get up at three o'clock in the morning <laughs> <laughs> that we have to do here in Sweden during summertime. But I mean, it's so rewarding when, when you get out of bed and you get out in the field, it's so rewarding. But I would say almost the same question as, as well, the same answer as the last question, anytime. Mm -hmm. I mean, and you, you can take really nice shots even during midday. Mm -hmm. Like this is a, it's a common guillemot. I just took that the, the other day, oh, actually last week up in Northern Norway. And in Northern Norway, it's 24 hours of daylight this time of the year. Mm -hmm. So this was, it's taken like six o'clock in the, in the afternoon and the sun was in the sky. So you, you can shoot, you can take nice, nice images every hour of the day. You just have to shoot a little bit different. So mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. In this one, in the editing, I just blew, blew out all the whites and just kept the blacks just to get it. There's no details in the white. Uh, in this image on the original raw file there's details but i like to just have it black and white. Yeah. so what is the general advice you would give to new photographers that just find this passion yeah patience persistence um and also i mean of course you have to to know your gear but if you want to be a successful uh wildlife or nature photographer you also have to, has to know a little bit about your subjects and, and about nature. It's very difficult to get into the right position, so to say, if you don't know anything about how a bird behave or, or stuff like that. So you need a little bit of that. You, you don't have to have a master's degree or something, but uh, a little bit of knowledge about mm -hmm. your subjects. Yeah. But be persistent, uh, do your stuff, be inspired by other photographers, but don't copy. I've been photographing for almost 40 years now makes me old <laughs> uh, <laughs> but still i mean when, when you're together with other photographers you do learn other mm -hmm. stuff uh, more stuff all the time mm -hmm. you get inspired you, as you say you see other angles mm -hmm. or, or things like that it's actually surprisingly how i mean you can be two or three photographers next to each other and you take completely different yeah. images mm -hmm. of the same subject so do you have any favorite features uh, in the camera especially in the new OM-1 camera? Definitely. The pro capture feature, that's that's just amazing. If, if you do bird photography, and especially with the, the smaller birds, I mean, if you have an eagle sitting on, on a, a branch or something, it's quite, I wouldn't say easy, but it's easier to actually capture that image with the normal normal features, so mm. to say. But when you have small birds like tits or passerines and stuff like that, be it as kingfishes, which is my favorite buzz. Mm -hmm. I mean, pro capture. That's a different ball game. You, mm -hmm. you, you. All those images that you missed before because you're too slow. You, mm -hmm. you can't react that fast as the birds flying no. away. Now you, you get them. Mm -hmm. So definitely, for me, it's pro capture. So, is there a, a photo genre you haven't tried that you would like to try? Uh, or? It's so many that I haven't tried, but. I'm quite fascinated, fascinated about street photography. Mm -hmm. When you see the nice, the really good street photography images, I think I would like to do mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I guess in the same time, I just feel awkward because if you're going to get those images, you have, you have to walk up to people and snap the shot before asking. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm -hmm. so, and it's, I'm afraid that's not going to work for me because I'm not that kind of person. <laughs> but I would, I would love to, to try and do more, more mm. people-oriented uh, street photography. But yeah, mm. maybe, maybe in my next life. Yeah. So we have some more pictures. Should we take a look at them? Yes. Why not? So this is also a really high key picture with another bird. Yes, that's a great flamingo. I uh, took that one in Kenya last summer. I like high key shots. Um, I do that with flowers. I do that in landscapes and animals and everything. That time when I went to Kenya, we went to, to a place where there's a lot of flamingos. I had this picture in, in my mind. 
but to start it, we couldn't get too close, that that close to, mm -hmm. to the flamingo. So I was like, hmm, not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, this this one flamingo just kept walking right to where I was lying down on the ground, and all of a sudden he was in in close distance. Mm. So this one is is a little bit cropped, not much. So this is like two third of the original five. Okay. It's also nice. He looks straight into the camera as well, so you get this a little bit of um, funny <laughs> funny feeling, <laughs> so to say. Yeah. Mm. And this one is also one of uh, the reasons with the with the very close um, range that you can get focus. This is a young male leopard. He walked up next to our safari vehicle and lay down like two meters wow. if, um, away from the safari vehicles. I was leading a, a, a photo foot tour in uh, the Okavango Delta in, uh, in Botswana. So I had clients in the back of the vehicle and they start complaining that the, that animal was too close to the vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> because yep. they had the big 600 millimeter lenses with a 4.5 meters distance for, for getting mm. focus. And this is from a really low angle. This, this is from a low angle. Is um, it outside the vehicle? No, or? it's not. I'm, I'm, I'm in the vehicle. <laughs> what I did was that I took my, my 150, 400 millimeter lens, held it outside of the oh, car okay. and I used the um, the LCD screen. Mm -hmm. So this is actually a full-size image. Amazing. So it's taken with, I use the, the uh, converter as well, of mm -hmm. course. So yeah, that's a, that's a nice one. And also, the thing that makes the image is that it's, it's looking straight into the camera and it's symmetric as well, mm -hmm. so yeah. People oftentimes ask you, which is your best image? Mm -hmm. And I, I haven't taken that one yet. But this is definitely one of my favorite ones. This one is taken like midday in South Africa. So the sun is just standing on, on top of of the sky and everything is, the, the light is so harsh and it's, it's actually terrible light. Mm -hmm. But if you start thinking in, in, in black and white and high key, you can still get a lot of nice shots. So there was this herd of elephants coming down to a water to drink and they, they were kind of in a rush because, I mean, they were thirsty. It was mm -hmm. warm and they were thirsty. So they kept, when they walked, all this dust kept rising. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the, um, the elephant on the right is like almost disappearing into dust. So I shot, this Im the, shot the image, uh, I think it was like two and two thirds overexposed or something mm -hmm. like that and then converted it into to black and white. Okay. Uh, and of course, there's a little bit of of highlighting and editing for, mm. for the lighter parts, but elephants is kind of my favorite mm. animal as well. Um, of course, when you go to Africa, you, are, you, you like to see the big mm. cats and everything, but if I don't get back home with a couple of really nice <laughs> elephant shots, I'm disappointed. So it's, is this a sunset or sunrise? Sun this is sunrise. Sunrise. This is a very early morning in uh, in the Matsamara in Kenya. Mm -hmm. He was actually standing with his head in a big termite mount for a very long time. And I was like a little bit frustrated because that's not a nice, mm -hmm. nice shot at all. But then all of a sudden he just starts walking out and the sun is just about to rise behind the clouds as well. So it's just turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I, I like the um, the contrast and the and the, the very saturated colors in the in the blues in the ground and the and the orange yellow in the sky. So, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you're allowed to say that your images are nice, but <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> you have to have a bit of self confidence and yeah, of course. tell the world that you are the best photographer. Well, I think <laughs> doesn't really matter if you're the best or the worst. It's as long as you, you're happy with the images you take. That's actually the things that matter. Yeah. And, it's not only the likes on Instagram, right? No, well, no. Thank you for today, Henrik. Thank you. Nice seeing you guys. <laughs> Bye. Bye.